Hi, I'm Torstein from Cinema Terror, and let's talk about the smash horror movie that everyone else has already reviewed for the last two weeks, the new adaptation of Stephen King's It. When you talk about a remake or reboot of a movie with such an iconic and beloved character as Pennywise, then I feel it's only fair to share your personal feelings towards the original material. Even though I grew up as a Stephen King fan, I had never actually read the book for it due to it being so damn large. I did however watch and rewatch the 1990s miniseries several times over the years, and I enjoy it just as much today as I did back when I was a teenager. Yeah, it does have some over the top and silly stuff in it, but the characters and the overall storytelling makes it all come together and work as an entertaining piece. Oh, pretty good to run, girly boy. <laughs> See you in your dreams. Oh, come back anytime. Bring your friends. Since this new version is currently in cinemas, I will keep this as spoiler free as possible. If you didn't already know, it takes place in the small familiar fictional Stephen King town of Derry in Maine, where an evil entity is tormenting all of the children that lives there. The entity can shift shapes after what the fear of the children is, and is otherwise just comfortable taking the shape of a creepy looking clown. The children must come together and face their fears in order to end all of the torment by taking the evil clown down once and for all. So this new version of it is… okay. It is worth watching as it does have some good stuff in it, but it is sadly brought down too much by feeling too much like a Hollywood product that went through a checklist before it went into production. It has poor directorial decisions, not enough character development, and surprisingly enough, several cringeworthy scenes that managed to put me out of the movie. The miniseries had both a part with the characters as children and one as adults. This movie only focused on the children's part, which makes sense as it gives more time to the part that most fans of the film enjoy the most and squeezing both parts in a 2 hour long movie would be a bit too much. But even if the kids only got like 90 minutes of running time in the original, and over 120 minutes in the new one, they actually felt more developed in the miniseries. There are two main reasons for this in my opinion. The first is the inconsistency of the character choices. Too many times one of the characters would just go on to do something stupid or way out of character in order to keep the story progressing. During the ending, the same stupid action is done twice by two different characters within 5 minutes, and neither times it felt natural to the previous behavior of the characters. That's just poor and cheap screenwriting in my opinion. It also didn't help that they basically ignored some of the kids. Mike and Stan could easily have just been written out of the movie without it affecting the end result, even ending up improving the film overall. The second is the lack of time given to them just being kids. As soon as 10 minutes of screen time passed by, where we get to become familiar with them, they just had to include a scare scene for some reason, probably to make sure that stupid horror fans wouldn't become bored. Cut a few of those one out and give us more chance to bond with the characters and feel their bond towards each other, and I might have cared more and become more invested in them, and ignore some of the other stuff I found flawed. Just like I did in the original. Perhaps it's just the way Hollywood looks at general cinema goers, I wouldn't know as I don't watch most new movies, but it nearly felt insulting when you sit in a cinema and the movie takes a pause from telling a story just to include scare scenes after scare scenes that are ultimately pointless as they don't do much for the story and hardly brings out any fright in you, due to them being too slick and overdone with too much CGI. They are simply there to remind you that they are watching a horror movie and they are the worst part of this film. They also had to overly explain every single thing that was going on, and I just hate that in movies. Ironically enough, the only scene that actually made the young audience I saw it with jump a bit is a single scene where the camera pans to the side and reveals a scary thing. A simple and easy camera trick that has been used for decades gave the biggest scare in a film that tries so hard to creep you out with big, expensive and loud scares. In fact, this movie reminded me a lot of another movie that couldn't restrain itself from having too much CGI scares either, which is the 2013 movie Mama. I must have totally blacked it out of my mind, as I had forgotten that director Andy Muschietti was in the director's chair for that one as well. Another huge problem I had with the film is that it felt like it had trouble finding its tone and keeping it consistent for the entire film. There's a few odd scene transitions that make me wonder what the hell happened. One example is when the kids get away from a scary event and the very next scene, on the same location and basically just after previous events has occurred, 
a character enters the picture and suddenly is supposed to be a funny scene. It was a very odd transition, and the film does have a few other ones like that one as well. I am also not a fan of the current trend of giving nods to the 80s. They do the retro jerking here as well, and they fail at being creative about it, rather than just going for repeating themselves over and over. On the positive side, I did like the child actors, even if I didn't care all that much for the choices the characters are made to do. The ones that get the most screen time all deliver good performances, and it is a shame that there couldn't have been more focus on fleshing them out a bit. Finn Wolfhard as Richie has a natural and fun charm to him, and even if it does get tired some that he has to deliver comedic lines in basically every single scene he's in, he's still a star of the film in my book. And while I thought that Sophia Lillis as Beverly was charming, I would have preferred it if they had toned down the sexual elements of the character a bit and made them more like just one of the boys. The friendship bond between them all would be better for me if she wasn't just included because the boys lusted after her. And before you say anything, yeah, I do know what happened in the book, but from my knowledge that's only one part of a character in the entire thing. And what about Bill Skarsgård, who had to tackle the big task of taking over the role of Pennywise from Tim Curry? Curry's Pennywise is absolutely the best part of the miniseries, and frankly the biggest reason for why most people have fond memories of it, except people like me who genuinely enjoy the entire miniseries. Skarsgård did just fine, his Pennywise is not the same as Tim Curry's, which is absolutely the way to go. We don't see all that much of him, but whenever he's on the screen he's bringing the character enough presence to make him feel creepy. So, the new IT, is it worth seeing? Yeah, I think it is. Even if I had problems with it, I do believe that this is a horror movie that horror fans should at least give a chance. It might be a better film for those who watch a few horror movies a year than a hardcore horror fan, but we just have to accept that we are not the intended audience for this 30 plus million dollar movie either. It is a movie that can be nitpicked in thousand pieces, but if you are able to ignore glaring flaws and just enjoy a new, big, shiny and fancy horror film, then by all means, have a blast with it. For me, I'd rather stay with the original 1990s TV series, which will still be the version I will revisit every other year. The 2017 version of IT gets an average score of 2.5 out of 5. So, what did you think of the new IT? Were you disappointed like I was, or did you have a great time with it like most other people in the world did? What other Stephen King story would you like seeing being brought back to the big screen? Let me know about it in the comment section below, subscribe if you like this review and want to keep up with more of my stuff, and of course, thank you and have a nice evening. Bill, if you'll come with me, you'll float too. You'll float too, you'll float too, you'll float too, you'll float too!